Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today I have a question for Dave Superpowers. And actually this question goes out to all of you. So if anybody has to answer, please let me know. Please let me know in the comments down below. So the question goes as follows. Does the subjective individual have or get a say in defining their own personality type? Should we allow the person, the individual we are typing or profiling to have a chance to dispute or argue against their read and the evidence we provide? Should we listen if a person tells us very strongly, I am not this type, I do not have this cognitive function, I don't relate to this, I don't feel this profile fits me? I say this realizing that objective personality is about trying to find more objective means of typing other people. I recognize and I see the positives in this system. I see the positives in relying on a co-operator, a co-pilot, somebody that can help verify your reads, somebody that can look at you together with you at the same person and help you stay clear of bias. I encourage and I appreciate the more critical nature of objective personality and I believe that it's on to something. I believe that it's got something right. Still I feel we have to ask ourselves this. Should the person have a say? Should they be able to dispute and tell us we misunderstood them? Should they be able to look at our evidence and tell us when we made a mistake? I realize the subject uh, lacks often information about how to type other people. They don't know how to type themselves, they don't know how to type others. That's often why they come to us in the first place. They're not sure on how to understand the dichotomies, they lack crucial information about different dichotomies, they're not quite sure on the difference between different personality traits and cognitive functions. So they come to us on some level out of ignorance. And here, I think we are the experts. We are the people who get this. We are the people who have some clues and some information. And here's where we can help as personality profilers. However, I recognize there are some things we cannot help with. You know, we are looking at often a 10-minute video or we're doing a 20-minute phone call with an individual. We lack a lot of evidence. We lack a lot of information. We lack a lot of context. We are assigned to that person on that day in that mood. We are assigned to that small piece of evidence that the person is deciding to share with us. And we have to trust that they are being honest with us when they share this information and that they are coming from the right perspective when they do. So I recognize that uh, in this uh, they can give us a lot of evidence. They can tell us a lot of things about themselves. They can tell us about who, what we do, who we, wh what they like to do, what they often do, who they are in different situations. They can give us a lot of information. But often I find that if information can be disregarded, a lot of the evidence they support to back up their personality profile can be disregarded. A lot of evidence is contextual or situational. Oh, some people say I'm this, or some people tend to describe me as that, and a lot of people know, think of me as an introvert, and you know, uh, I read this, and uh, it, uh, according to that test I got that personality type. But a lot of it is very situational, like we cannot verify or evaluate or determine how uh, correct this information is, or how correct other people are in this view of you. So I recognize that as an operator, personality profiler, you have to be able to disregard unimportant evidence and we have to recognize when people are bullshitting us. So where I feel I struggle is as a personality profiler I cannot assert or say to other people you are this type. I can say I think you're this type. This is what I see. This is the things that I noticed. This is what I saw in your video. But I cannot 100% force my view on another person. And I have to recognize as a personality profiler, beyond just being a profiler, I'm also a teacher. People come to me not for a profile as much as uh, an education on themselves, an education on the scales and how they are manifested in themselves, an education on the cognitive functions and how they work in the individual. So my responsibility as a teacher is to help them understand and uh, if I can't help them understand, if I'm just slamming evidence in their face, chances are I'm a bad teacher and they're going to disagree with me out of spite. 
you know people are people are like that you know if they feel pressured into a personality type or a box they will either disagree with us just because they get upset and just because they don't want to be boxed in or they will agree with us because they are afraid to disagree with us so I recognize I have to be patient with other people and I have to listen to them and let them understand and let them uh, figure it out and let them have their process and I have to give them the information, as much information as possible. And I have to be humble because I don't have the science behind me. I can't say I'm verified by an institution. I can't say I have 100% objective evidence. I'm getting there where I try my best and I try to stay critical and I try to root out bias in myself and I'm trying my best to understand the, the archetypes and the dichotomies as good as possible but uh, ultimately I don't have scientific backing to myself so something tells me I have to stay humble and I have to find a balance between the subjective factor and the objective factor realizing psychology is rooted in the subjective, rooted in our feelings, motivations, and our thought patterns. Things that can only be found and seen inside. Things that uh, can only partially be understood through the outside. Things that get twisted and distorted as soon as they come out. Actions often don't match motivations. What we intend is not always what we do. People are difficult, people are strange, and the evidence and the actions and their behavior is not always a sign of their motivations, their values, or their feelings. So, as a psychologist, as a typologist, don't we have to handle the subjective factor with a bit of respect? That's my thoughts, uh, this is my question. Let me know in the comments what you think, and I'll see you all in the next video.